G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company down under in New Zealand. So this one's mainly for the New Zealand guys. So over here when we've done an engine swap, we have to go through a certification process. So the certification involves a check of the whole vehicle, they check everything on the vehicle, done by a qualified inspector. Now there's a set of guidelines for that process, which are available online and um, through the LVVTA. And part of that process involves drive shaft hoops. I've just popped a set of drive shaft hoops onto this 2003 Highlight. So I thought we'd go over them and I'll just show you how I've solved this problem. There's lots of ways of solving it. However, I see a lot of very crap drive shaft hoops. So the idea is if the drive shaft breaks, it will fall down and be captured by the hoop. Of course, if it breaks here, it's generally just going to fall on the road and, and, and just bounce along the road. But if it breaks at the front, it's got the potential to dig in and cause a lot more damage. And there's also, on some cars, uh, occupant safety to be um, wary of. We don't want a drive shaft coming through the floor. So what I do on this one, and yes, these brackets do need to be welded in properly, but I put an additional cross member through most of my four-wheel drives. This plate must be the full width of the chassis. Both sides. And then four bolts to hold the hoop to that cross member. This stuff here, 50 by 5. And that's just a commercially available hoop. Hey, they're not ultra sexy or anything, but they get the job done and you don't have problems going to cert with them. Uh, providing you don't buy one of the really crappy ones that aren't up to spec. For the back, I employ the same principle because there's sort of nowhere up in here. And I don't want to hack holes through the floor because there's double skins and triple skins and ugliness to get through. So I weld a bracket at the back. This is yet to be welded on fully. Put a cross member through. That bolts in. So this can be taken out. It doesn't take me long to whip it out. I then weld the hoop to that. Check you got clearance for the bolts. 150 from there to there is ideal, but they'll allow you to go out to 250. If you want to check, get the specs out. So I was reading the spec book last night. Bolted in, nice and strong. I could hang off that, no problem at all. It's going to handle the force. And I've allowed for the movement of the drive shaft, the articulation of that drive shaft as well. Because you really don't want that hitting. Of course, the diff moving up and down. When putting these in, uh, you need to really look at best practice. Things like through here, there is a crush tube. I just whip holes through, through the center here so it's nice and simple to put the, the bolts in. And I use the same bolts that come with the drive shaft hoops because they're the right ones. Yeah. Um, Careful with your bolts up through here that they don't touch your drive shaft. And that's why I go from the inside out. The drive shaft hoops are a really simple process, but they just take time to do. I think these ones were about eight to 10 hours worth of work for me. But they look good. They look like they're meant to be there. And I prefer them bolted or welded onto strong chassis members. I see them through the floor, and through the floor is okay, but you have to put doubler plates on both sides. And uh, I'm not actually a fan going through the floor. I prefer on most of my jobs, because they've got a separate chassis, to attach to the chassis. Do them right, and you won't have any problem with the certainty. So I hope that's helpful. We'll talk to you again soon.